Greetings, fellow learners. Now, before we get into this wonderful video on attention mechanisms for time series transformers, I have a thought-provoking question for you. In your daily life, do you multitask? And if you do, what activities do you multitask? And if not, why don't you? Now, for me personally, I can only multitask simple things, like I can talk to you while driving a car, but not really much beyond this. So how about yourself? Please comment down below your thoughts and I would love to hear them. Now, this video is going to be divided into three passes, where we're going to start with the what and why of prob sparse attention, attention for time series transformers, and then the next two passes are going to compare the full attention architecture along with this more efficient prob sparse attention architecture. So, let's get to it. This is the transformer neural network. It was originally designed to solve sequence to sequence problems. Um, sequence is data with some defined ordering, like the words in a sentence or like time series data. And you can see here the working of a transformer to translate from English to French. However, for long time series data, this architecture has three main issues. The quadratic computation of self-attention, the memory bottleneck in stacking layers for long inputs, and the speed plunge in predicting long outputs. The main issue that we want to focus on for this video is primarily the quadratic computation of self-attention. Attention involves how much focus one data point should have on another data point. Larger the focus means greater the correlation. Self-attention means that we compare all the input data points to all the same input data points and identify these correlations. For n input time series data points, traditional full self-attention is going to require some order of n squared multiplication operations. And this can be costly for large input sequences. The Informer architecture addresses this using prob sparse self-attention. And this involves using the concepts of probability and sparsity to identify a subsets of active data points and only perform multiplication operations with them. And with this type of attention, we can reduce the number of multiplication operations from the order of n square, which is quadratic in input, to the order of n log n. Less multiplication operations means faster processing during a forward pass, which means faster inference. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. What problem does prob sparse attention address? A, the complexity of generating long time series data outputs. B, the quadratic computation of self attention in long input sequences. C, the inability to stack multiple layers in the transformer network, or D, the requirement of large data sets for training transformer models. Comment your answer down below and let's have a discussion. And if you think I do deserve it at this point, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's going to do it for quiz time and pass one of this explanation, but keep paying attention because I will be back to quiz you. For this next pass, we are going to compare the architecture of full self-attention with that of the prob sparse attention. So let's start with full self-attention. Now this block over here is going to be the encoder block for the transformer neural network. And I'm kind of just starting only at the encoder block, even though that there is some pre-processing that goes on here. So for context, if we look at the transformer neural network and we have the encoder block, we are going to be passing in timestamps one time step at a time. These are going to be converted into vector representations through input embeddings. And we are going to add in positional information via positional encodings. And it is the resulting vectors that we see right here at the beginning of this encoder. 
and for an argument's sake, so that we can see the shape of these tensors throughout the flow, we're going to assume that the batch size is 30, the number of input timestamps is 50, and each of these timestamps is going to be encoded into a 512 dimensional vector. We now take this tensor and pass it through a feed forward layer to generate query, key, and value vectors for every single time step. Technically speaking, these query, key, and value vectors are different embedding representations of the same input time step. So for this case, the first time step would be represented by a 512 dimensional query vector, a 512 dimensional key vector, and a 512 dimensional value vector. And so we have a tensor representation of 30 cross 50 cross 1536, which is just three times 512. Next, we're going to perform multi-head self-attention. And in order to do this, we will break down this 1536 dimension vector into eight parallel parts and perform attention along these eight parts in parallel. So 1,536 divided by eight is 192. And then we perform the crux of the attention operation. Now the crux of this operation is just multiplying the query vectors along with the transpose of the key vectors. So more specifically, we have 50 time steps. And so we have 50 query vectors and each of these query vectors is multiplied by the 50 key vectors in order to come up with this 30 cross 50 cross 50 tensor. And each of these 50 cross 50 elements is going to represent some correlation of a single time step with respect to another time step. We then add a padding mask, and this padding mask is more for a practical implementation standpoint and not really anything to do theoretically speaking, because in the encoder, every timestamp has the ability to look before it as well as after it in order to create some attention. However, there are padding tokens that are appended to the end of a sequence if it is just not long enough to be the maximum sequence length. Hence, we would pad it with some zeros as we just don't want any timestamp to really focus or pay attention to those padding tokens. And hence, we just have a padding mask. Adding these values together, you can see you get just the same 30 cross 50 cross 50 tensor. Now from here, we're actually going to perform some scaling followed by a softmax. Now, why do we perform scaling? It's because some of these values might be quite large. And if they're quite large, then if we just perform a softmax directly, we might see certain values become close to zero or close to one. In which case, during the backpropagation step, this could lead to very small gradients and hence the gradients will vanish and the network will not learn properly. So in order to stabilize the training process, we are going to actually perform some scaling, and then we perform a softmax operation in order to get an attention matrix. And this attention matrix would be like 50 cross 50, where each element is going to be some probability-esque value of how much each time step is paying attention to the other time steps. Next, we are going to multiply this with the value vectors, which are just the vector representations of the input itself. And we're just gonna get these new set of value tensors that have the attention matrix incorporated into it. Now this value tensor is going to be 30 cross 50 cross 64. And this is for one attention head. And if we combine and concatenate all the attention heads along this last dimension, you will get 30 cross 50 cross 512 dimensional tensor. And the rest of this is just the normal encoder operation, which we don't really need to go through right now, as it is not part of the full self-attention, which we just covered. So now that we covered the full self-attention just now, let's actually move on to the prob sparse attention and see how it is different. Quiz time. 
It's that time of video again. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. What is the time complexity of the forward pass of the encoder for the original transformer with respect to the input sequence length n? A, O of n, B, order of log n, C, order of n log n, or D, order of n squared. Comment your answer down below and let's have a discussion. Now that's gonna do it for quiz two and pass two of this explanation, but keep paying attention because I will be back to quiz you. Now, the main goal of prop sparse attention is to avoid this very expensive query cross key multiplication where this will lead to a quadratic time and space complexity in terms of the input. So in order to avoid this operation, here is what we do. Now for this prof sparse attention case, let's just assume a very simple case where we have 10 time steps that are being passed into the encoder for this new informer architecture. Now, if we have 10 time steps, each of these time steps is going to be encoded into a query vector, a key vector, and a value vector. And let's also say that the batch size is one for very simple case. So the query tensor Q is going to be one cross 10 cross four. And four here is let's just say it's the dimension of each vector. And similarly, we're also going to have a key tensor and a value tensor of the same dimensions. Now, in order to generalize this as a statement, let's say LQ and LK are just going to be the total number of input queries and keys respectively. So if we were to do the math for this, this will be a natural logarithm of 10, which we perform a ceiling of. And let's say this F is just some constant, it's like a factor. And for argument's sake, let's say that it is the number two. So two times the ceiling of log to the base E, of 10 is going to be six, which I write over here. And the same thing is LK bar, which we also write as six over here. LQ bar is the number of query vectors that we are trying to select. And LK bar is the number of key vectors that we are trying to select. But this will become more apparent very shortly. After computing LQ bar and LK bar, we will now for every single query just sample six keys. So for the first query, we'll sample six keys. The second query, sample another six keys with replacement. The third query, we'll sample another six keys all the way up to the 10th query. And so what we're gonna be ending up with is for 10 queries, we are going to sample six keys. And it's only for these cases that we perform a multiplication operation in order to get some correlation. And this is where we have the Q, K sample transpose matrix. And it's going to be of 10 cross six, but we just add a couple of dimensions so that we could perform further operations on it. Next, what we're going to do is compute an affinity value M. So this is basically going to try to determine of the 10 queries, what subset of six queries or LQ bar queries should we select? And in this, this involves first trying to get the most active queries. And so what we're gonna do is for every single one of the 10 queries, we're going to compute the maximum affinity of Q for any K and divided by the mean affinity for any K. And so for every query, we will have a single integer value that will quantify its active nature. And hence we have a one cross one cross 10. Next, we're going to sample the top LQ bar queries. That's the top six queries in this case with the six highest activations. That's what this is doing. So M top is gonna to be the one cross one cross six. And we have this entire original query matrix, which we then perform a query selection to get Q bar, which is going to be a one cross six cross four tensor with the six most active queries. And it's only with this new subset of queries that we're actually now going to multiply with the original key vector so that we can perform the attention here. And this will give us Q bar K. 
for each of the six queries, we will perform attention on all of the 10 keys. To this, we are going to perform scaling, and this is to ensure we don't have vanishing gradients. We then perform a softmax activation to get probability values. We will now apply to the value tensors, and so the resulting value is just going to be the set of vectors with the attention information that's encoded in it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some context vector. Now, this context vector is just gonna consist of some dummy data. It's gonna consist of like 10 vectors of the same data itself. But we will only update, of the 10 of these, we're only gonna update six of them, which correspond to the active queries. And so we will have this value tensor. And what this will look like in this case is 10 rows in which four of these rows are just going to be the same values of vectors and the six other rows are going to be actually active queries. And we do this to preserve dimensions. But after this, we're gonna perform a distillation strategy that will actually remove the more passive queries after some transformations. But overall, this is the working for the prob sparse attention as opposed to just the full attention. Quiz time. All right, this is gonna be a fun one. How does prob sparse attention prevent quadratic time and space complexity with respect to the input length? A, by ignoring irrelevant data points. B, by sampling a subset of keys and queries depending on their importance. C, by reducing the number of attention heads used. Or D, by using a recurrent neural network to process the inputs sequentially. Comment your answer down below and let's have a discussion. And once again, if you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time and pass three of this explanation, but before we go, let's generate a summary. The transformer neural network can process sequence data. However, for long time series data, this architecture has three main issues. The first is the quadratic computation of self-attention. The second is the memory bottleneck in stacking layers for long inputs. And the third is a speed plunge in predicting long outputs. And in this video, we mostly just attacked this quadratic computation of self-attention. Now flipping over to the architecture diagram for the full self-attention, we see this quadratic complexity specifically occur in this step over here, where we have a query which has n number of records, and then we have a key transpose which has an n number of columns. And so when we do a multiplication, we're going to have to do a multiplication of the order of n squared. Now, in order to avoid this quadratic complexity in terms of space and time, what we'd use is prob sparse attention, in which case we try to first, let's see over here, we will sample the key vectors, perform an operation of multiplication there. So this will be just order of like an n log n. And then after some further processing, we use this to sample the query vectors itself and then perform the actual attention here, which is again, once again, the order of n log n. And so we can perform all of these attention operations and create an attention matrix without incurring a quadratic time and space complexity operation. And this is good for longer sequences. Now in the next video, we're going to more formally define the time and space complexity that we saw in this video. However, that is all that we have for today. If you want to know a little bit more about the fundamental transformer architecture and watch me walk through every single component of it, please do considering watching the Transformer from Scratch playlist, and I think it'll be pretty fun. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you really soon. Bye-bye.